What up, beautiful people? It's your boy Mundus. Welcome to the Shining Light, a place where you're going to learn the Word of God that's going to transform your life and improve your life. I'm back again with another beautiful daily devotional. Um, I'm reading from Rhapsody of Realities. It's a devotional we're using, and today's title, we're going to talk about the New Testament identifies you. And um, our theme scripture is from uh, James chapter 1 and verse 22. I'll read on. But, but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only. Alright, so let's just read the first uh, paragraph of the devotional, and then we'll try to study it and um, analyze it. It says, To the new creation, the word of God is a mirror, not a compilation of commandments to be obeyed. The Christian is a word practitioner. This is something many are yet to understand. For example, when you read in Ephesians chapter 5 and 3 to 4, it says, By fornication and all uncleanliness, covetousness, let it not be once named among you, as become its saints, neither filthiness, no foolish talking, no jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. It says it's not a commandment. It's not telling you what you, telling you, what you must not do. Rather, it's showing you who you are, the righteousness of God in Christ, with a sanctified heart, mind, and tongue. Alrighty, let's just let's just pause there for a minute and and and, and look at this topic. It says the New Testament identifies you. It says, "Be doers of the word, not hearers." So when we're born again, we're born as new creations. You know, the new uh, the Christian uh, in the Old Testament, God gave the children of Israel. Uh, commandments and laws if you read the book of uh leviticus uh, all that book uh, exodus leviticus deuteronomy you have a, a bunch of laws and do not do this or do this how to do stuff this is what you should do this is what you should not do this is what the consequences of what if you do this if the consequences these are the blessings these are the curses so it's more like a, a rigid structure of commands and the children of israel could not fulfill those commands because number one they were they, they were just so hard to fulfill. They did not have the cap the capability, you know, to fulfill those commands. Cause it's like, how are you gonna fulfill all these commands? It was like so many commandments. And then when Christ came, he fulfilled the law. He basically fulfilled the law, and abolished the law. We're not even supposed to keep the com new uh, the, the the ten commandments. He fulfilled the law. And he got rid of the law, and, and and we were born, and he brought in a new race, a new type of being. He was the firstborn from the dead. When he rose again, a new creation. So he says in Second Corinthians chapter five verse seventeen, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. So we were born again with a new heart. We were born again by the word of God. So the word that was given to them to fulfill, which was hard for them, because we were not born of that word. We were born of that word of that, that gave him those instructions. So the instructions of God, we were actually born of the word of God. It says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but by the word of God. That's in, uh, let me show you that. I think it's in Second Peter. Let's see. Let's see if you can find it. I don't want to just be quoting stuff. Uh, let's find it. Maybe verse 3. Mm, doo -doo 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 -doo. No, is it there? Let's see. Uh, no, no. Let me see if I can find. Hold on, let me find this real quick. Oh yes, I find it. It's First Peter. Uh, ooh, chapter one and verse twenty-three. And I'm gonna read on. I hope you can see that. It says, "Being born again, not of corruptible seed." But of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For as great, um, anyway, the whole th you can read the whole verse. But the point is, we were born of God's word. We were born again of the word of God. So, God's instructions are not laws. You know, the, the New Testament says the topic today says the New Testament identifies you. So when God, when, when when we read the scriptures, it's just describing who we are. We're not trying to become that. Because God has made us that what he talks about. So when he says, he gave an example, 
but fornication, uncleanness, and covetousness, let it not be once named among you, neither filthiness or foolish talking, which are convenient, but rather give her thanks. He's trying to say, hey, you are born again. This is who you are. You're not trying to say, let me not try to not fornicate. Let me not try to not do talk bad. It's just looking at the mirror and he said, and understanding, oh, this is who you are. Don't act like this. Do the word, the word of God. You're not trying to become that. You're already there. You just need to do the word. It's like a mirror. The mirror shows you this is how you look like. So you conform based on what you see on the other side of the mirror. So this is exactly what uh, the word of God is for, for, for a Christian. It is not commands. It is just actually a description of who you are. It's an album. It's, um, it's a description of exactly who you are, what you're capable of, what you have, what you can do, what's your origin. I just read it to you right there. Being born again, not of corruptible. We were born of God's word. That's who we are. So the, the, the God's instructions are not hard because we were born of that. We were born of his word. Um, I hope that makes sense. Let's keep on reading. It says the word of God reflects your true nature, identity, origin, and heritage in Christ. The more you look at the word, the more you see yourself. God's word is life something to live out and that's amazing um and you know the important thing of god's mirror god's word is the more you look at his word it's like for example if you're going to work and you look in a mirror and you notice your tie is a little bit crooked or your hair is not fixed up right you make adjustments because the mirror tells you hey hold on a second this is how you really look like and you'll be like oh, okay i need to fix myself whatever this is you know but the mirror of god's word shows you exactly your identity your nature where you from, where you going, what you have, all your capabilities. And when you look at it, and the, and the beautiful thing of this God's mirror, when, the more you look at this mirror, the more you become it. The more you become the image that you see. So the more you, you study the word and you see all this about yourself, the more you start conforming. Your spirit starts, you start acting that way. You're changed from one glory to another. It's like the more you look, the more you become. You might look at your life and say, oh my God, this, all these things are saying about me. I don't see it. Yeah, but just keep on looking. Because the more you look at God's word, the more you study it, like we're doing right now, we're looking at God's mirror. We're understanding who we are, what we can do, and our capabilities. So the more we, we, we study, like right, right now, and we're listening, the more our spirit starts receiving the word. And the glory in our life starts changing, increasing. And we start becoming that. We start mirroring, mirroring that in our real life. We start doing that. We can become doers. He says, um, "Don't we? We're not hearers only." He says, "Be doers of the word and not hearers." So we're not just hearing to hear. No, we, we as we, as we study the word, we're doing it. Say, so, "Oh, this is how I'm supposed to act. Like I'm acting like this." Okay, this is how I'm. Acting. If the word of God says this is who I am, then this is who I am. I don't care what anybody else tells me. The word of God has said this is what I have. This is what I can do. I act out like that, and that's that. That's important. And he goes on. He says, for example, when Jesus said, "A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I've loved you, that ye also love one another." That's from John chapter thirteen, verse thirty-four. He was addressing men and women of the senses, people who weren't born again, but being born again, having received the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, "The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit." which is given unto us. That's Romans chapter 5, verse 5. It is important. So when Jesus was, for example, giving that commandment, he was teaching men and women of the Old Testament because he, he didn't die yet. He was not, he, he didn't go on the cross. He was, this was his teaching before he died. But when Jesus died on the cross and rose again, a new race, when he rose again, we rose again from the dead with him as new creations, a new type of man came from the grave. A new, the new, the New Testament began when Jesus rose from the dead, and it was, it was still. He said, "Remember when he was sharing the Last Supper? He said, take this bread, break this bread, drink this cup. This is the cup of the New Testament in my blood.' So the New Testament began when Jesus died and God raised him from the dead, and then He brought in this new type of being, who was born of the Word, who got who. This type of being does not need to be told. This is a commandment. You should love." And he has to try. No, this this new person has the love of God given to him in his spirit. So loving is in his nature. He just has to 
conform to that because he said the love of God is shred abroad in our hearts. I mean, the Spirit of God gave us his love. He put his love in our spirits so we can love as God loves. We don't have to struggle with love because God gave us his kind of love and we need to conform to that love. That's exactly what it is. Um, let me keep it right. He says, we're not commanded to love. We were born of love. We are the offsprings of love. Love is our nature. That's in Romans chapter 5, verse 5. It's a description of who you are. Once you accept it, you become it. That's the principle. And he said, let me read, read that again. It says, once you accept it, you become it. So when you accept what God says about you, you become that. Because you're already that. You start seeing it in your life. When you read something in the New Testament that sounds like, don't do this or don't do that. That means we are those who don't do such things. It's a picture of, of you. So the Word of God just um, paints a picture, like I was about to say. It creates a picture of who you are. It shows you, hey, this is the kind of person you, you are. Not trying to be, you are. And when you see it, I say, oh, it's the person I am. And you're just, and you are we are just yourself to become that. I'm the type of person that loves some of love. I'm the type of person that forgives and because and, 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 I got the love of God in me, so I'm going to forgive. Because love is in my spirit. I don't have to struggle with it because this is who I am. I'm the type of person that walks in righteousness. I got the righteousness of God. So I'm walking in righteousness. I'm not trying to obey righteousness. I got the nature of God. So I hope that makes sense. Um, Read on. He says, the word, particularly the epistles, paint the picture of the new creation. That's how come as you're studying and meditating on the scriptures, suddenly the word of God comes alive to you. It becomes how you see yourself every day. It's like I said, it's a mirror prince. The more, the more, the more you, 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 you study the word of God, the more you, the more you, me you meditate on it, you're conformed to that image. I want to show you that. That's in, uh, let's read that real quick. Let me show you that. That's in Second Corinthians chapter three. Let's see. Ooh, 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 ooh. Just give me a sec. Uh, ah, my phone is acting. Okay, let me. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So yeah, the, the, like I said, the word of God is a mirror principle. So it shows you who you are, and you act like that. Second Corinthians chapter three, verse eight. It says, "But we are we open face." Beholding as in a glass the glory of God, I change into that same image from glory to glory, even by the Spirit. Meaning, the glass here means mirror. As you look at the mirror of God's word, you are chained from glory to glory. Your glory in the Spirit increases. The more you look at it, the more you become what you see. The more you look at it, the more you become what you see. The more you study, you see, you see your, your life all readjusting and realigning to what the Word of God says. That's what it's all about. Uh, let's go back here. Do, do, do. It says that's the miracle of God of growth because as you discover who you are in the word, you discover your beauty and your glory increases. It is a life of ever increasing glory through the word. Hallelujah. The more you look at the mirror, the more your life grows. So I want us to take this confession together. Just say this after me. I'm the expression of the unseen Christ, the brightness of his glory. As he is, so am I in this world. As I stay my mind on the picture of me that I see in the Word, I'm transformed. I experience ever-increasing glory. Hallelujah forevermore. And you can read further studies in the book of 2 Corinthians 3.8, Hebrews 10.16, 2 Corinthians 3.2.3. 2, and if you're following a one-year Bible plan, a two-year plan, the scriptures right there, you can follow. You know, I hope you've been blessed by today's devotional. You know, I want you, you to go back and listen to it again, meditate on it, go through the scriptures. Leave me a comment. If you have questions, any questions you have, just put them in the comment section. I'll try to respond as soon as I can. Share this video with your friends. Like, comment, subscribe, you know. Um, yeah, and I hope you've been blessed. I'm, before I go, I want to give a chance to someone that's not born again. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, today's your day to receive salvation for your soul. And it's as simple as believing in your heart that Jesus died for you and God raised him from the dead. So I'm going to lead you to a prayer of salvation. I want you to say this out loud. Don't think in your mind. Just say it out loud. This is how you receive salvation. So say this after me. Repeat this after me. Just say, Oh Lord God, I believe with all my heart in Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. I believe He died for me and God raised Him from the dead. I believe He's alive today 
I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life from this day. Through him and in his name, I have eternal life. I'm born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. I'm now a child of God. Hallelujah forevermore. If you said that prayer, it's as simple as that. You're born again. Congratulations. Leave me a comment below. If you said that prayer, I'll try to respond to you as soon as I can. Subscribe to this channel so you can learn more of God's word and watch your life increase from one level of glory to another. Until tomorrow, it's been your boy Mundus. Be victorious and successful in all that you do. God bless you.